So, poetry. Poetry is still a big part of my journey as a writer, as an artist. So, because of that, I feel there's always need to tap into what other artists are doing and just find out what they're getting up to. So today, um, we're going to be talking about what my body knew. This is an anthology, a recently published anthology by MH, a young lady who is so amazing. So MH is that poet that goes deep into it. You know, she doesn't leave any stone unturned. She explores her thoughts and her angles are just so different. You wouldn't even think of it. She takes us into the depths of whatever she's talking about, be it depression, love, heartbreak, individualism, the things that society tends to ignore, right? So let's get into it. Her anthology called What My Body Knew is written on the premise of the heart. How the heart pumps blood to the rest of the body. It feels, it hurts, it compromises, it even gives up. It separates, it loves. The title, What My Body Knew, is a realization, rather a revelation of what we feel as people and how we deal with it. The title seems to embody a woman in every way. From the way I see it, it seems to embody a woman. The way a woman can get hurt. The way a woman can let go, struggle. The love, the strength of a woman. So I just jotted down some poems that spoke to me, you know, as a person. So the first one is entitled A Life of My Own. If it is all subjective, let my let me experience my own subjectivity. Why would I believe in another's tale when I can tell my own? Why would I protect another's dreams unfit for my soul? What I like about this poem is the diction used. It's a very short poem and it's talking about being in charge of your own dreams, you know, telling your own story and not hearing from other people or letting other people tell your story. It's like giving you hope, giving you an outlet that you as a person, you can tell your own story. You can share your own story with no problems, with no holding back. The next poem is Why I Want. I love this one because it's questions all the way. It's asking you questions that you're probably afraid to ask yourself half the time. Why do you want to think? Because I want to. Why do you want freedom? Because I want it. Why do you want desire? Why do you live? Because I must. So this poem is like, it's just questions all the way. And these are questions that we don't even bother to ask ourselves. Like, why do I exist? Why do I live? And half the time we don't have answers for these things. And then she sort of diverts your attention a bit from the desires that you could have as a person to the things that affect young girls and women today. Period. The blood still warm and filtered and pure. My walls feel kissed. My walls feels kissed. Missing you for a bit, but you'll be back soon. After I let it all slide through my fingers down the drain, this poem is talking about menstruation. It's talking about a period. A period that goes, right, and comes back the next month. I love this poem because as a woman, I totally hate going on my menses. And this poem is just like talking about it all. This poem is just like going there. It goes to read... They'll find this inappropriate, but this shit is normal, period. 
I think it also goes beyond like your menstrual period, like your menses. It also goes beyond talking about the things that girls face, the things that girls go through with the body changes and everything. And it's not just the period, you know? The next poem is Sheets. Sheets is a nice poem because it's talking about the conversations that lovers have in between the sheets. You have good conversations, bad conversations, you have fights in between the sheets. I love the way she really brings simplicity, you know, into her titles, simplicity into her poems and the way she writes, you know. You can feel the emotion. The next poem is called Button. I'm falling into you. What is the singularity, this other dimension? You're like a button. Press play and I'm gone. Simple simplicity. You can easily understand. So you find that in her poetry, she talks about responsibility. She talks about society in a subtle way. This next poem is called, I'm Not Your Mummy. Please don't expect me to take you in for no reason at all. Please don't be entitled. Please don't suck on my breast. Please don't treat me like your energetic therapist. Please don't let me pick up your slack. Please don't transfer. Please don't blame me for scars you came with. This poem, you know, it just... <laughs> It's amazing in the fact that this is exactly what society does. We teach our boy children a certain way and we pamper them in a certain way. And because of that, you find that they expect women to pick up the slack. They expect women to do everything. You get to that point where a man can't even do anything for himself just because he paid bride price or he's your husband or whatever. And... I love the last line because it reads, please don't be society in a single body. Strive to be a better man. Strive to be a better woman. You know, please don't be society in a single body because society has its way of thinking, you know. Okay, the next poem. This one is at the top of my list because it's just a title. And... Um, it's just a title, hey, and one line. The headline is, I'm not your second chance. And the poem reads, At Life. This is the shortest poem in the whole book. But it is saying so much, you know. And, it's, well, for me, it's my favorite poem because simplicity just rocks. So the next poem is... So she goes on to talk about themes like apologizing, forgiveness. Um, she's got lines like, I'm not sorry I left, sorry I went back. She has poetry that talks about being made to feel special, you know. She's got poetry that is talking about nobody asked you to love me. She's talking about self-love, self-hope. She's talking about a life where you just don't concentrate on the negative, but you concentrate on the positive. And um, for me, this is, this is just, it's a brilliant anthology because I like the way she has used her language. It's in English, but I like the way she's picked her words. They are simple. Any person who picks up this anthology can actually read through it and get what exactly the poet is saying. So she's got a poem called Untitled Too. But you're allowed to tell your story. I'm learning to tell mine too. Only to myself where I can try to listen and believe me. So many times you want to tell people what you're going through. You want to tell people what's going on in your life and it just doesn't work because you feel like people are going to judge you. You feel like people are going to laugh at you. People are going to call you names. 
But at the end of the day, you just you just want to say your piece. I mean, everybody's got a voice. You want to say something, you know? Nobody asked you to love me. Don't make me seem like the desperate fool. You could have been honest from the get-go when you pursued me. Oof, okay. You didn't have to bear through loving me if you found it nothing but pain, nothing but a strategy. Nobody asked you to love me, so why did you make me feel like you did? I can feel the emotion in this poem because it's like someone who fell in love with someone for a certain reason, you know, and the reason wasn't love. And, um, and then she's got a poem called Gone. For me, this, like, it, it just shows you her thought process and the difference in her thoughts. The poem is titled Gone. Pulled out a pen and paper, wrote your name, lit a match, watched each letter disappear in the flames, poured a glass of water over the dead ashes that used to be the space you occupied within me. This poem is beautiful, you know, because pulled out a pen and paper is saying, I'm letting go. It's therapy. It's putting stuff down that you don't need anymore, right? Stuff, it's, you're emptying your soul, right? Wrote your name and lit a match. When you burn something, you don't expect that thing to come back. It's gone forever, for good, zilch. You're not going to see it again. Watched each letter disappear in the flames. When I look at this line, and the word flames, it takes me to thinking of um, old flame, you know, emotions, feelings, um, things that you used to do together, memories, you know. Watched each letter disappear. It means... She is letting go, or he is letting go of all those things that were there before. Poured a glass of water over the dead ashes that used to be the space you occupied within me. For me, this line is symbolizing purity. It's symbolizing a new start, a new beginning, where you're pouring water over something. Something that is now dead to you is something that is not going to come up in the future. For me, this poem, I relate to it a lot because in life you meet people. We part, we meet to part and we part to meet. In life you meet certain people, they come into your life for a certain time and when they're gone, they're gone. They're not going to come back. If they do come back, they were meant to be in your life. So when I look at this anthology, I see it as a blend a mixture of thoughts of a young lady who's seeing the ills that are happening in society, a young lady who is seeing the different things that are happening in the world and trying to piece it together so simple for each and every person out there to hear her. This is a young lady that has a voice, a voice that has been silent for too long, a voice that is now speaking. A voice that is speaking based on what she's seeing in the world and also based on the things that she has experienced with the relationship she's had and the people that she's seen. And for me, this this is a very it's a very special anthology because she is not just scratching the surface, she's really going deep into relationships and how relationships affect us and how the heart is affected sometimes if you meet the wrong person you're in love with the wrong person and then you have a breakup with that person and the breakup can be so bad that you might not heal from that what i love about her words is that she's with each poem she's taking you deeper into it like this poem called Score, breathing in and out, inhabiting each space within, letting lies go every last one. It hurts so deeply. I 
until it doesn't anymore. When you look at this poem, it's short, yeah, but the amount of meaning that is in this poem is great. It's talking about lies, it's talking about space within, it's talking about breathing in and out. When you're in love, you can't just help but be in love. You can't wait to see the person. You can't wait to go on a date with them. You talk on the phone for hours. But then when it hurts, it cuts so bad. It cuts so deeply. Sometimes you cry. Sometimes you just live until it doesn't hurt anymore. You know? Poetry. Poetry sometimes might get a bit too deep for people who don't get it or who don't have the power to analyze it. But in this anthology, what my body knew, she is like going really deep into it, you know? So let me read Sheets. Sheets. Let's breathe together. Let's pick up the pace and slow it down. In time to embrace this play, this exploration, close this exchange of intricate messages, just come as you are, no show, just a delicate dance, pour a glass, skin to skin, chest to chest, mingling minds, intertwined souls in bed sheets. This is an amazing anthology and I totally love it. I love its simplicity. I love the way she really goes deep into these intimate details about love, about heartbreak, about depression, about death. Things that we don't want to talk about. It's a really amazing anthology. And I think if you're in love with poetry, you should just get your hands on it and read through it. It's amazing. It's totally, totally amazing. It's mind-blowing. And I think she really did a good job on this one because we don't really talk about love like that, but she really went deep into it. And the imagery she uses is simple. You can understand. Imagery like sheets, button, you know, why I want a life of my own. Everybody wants a life of their own. Nobody wants to share a life with somebody. Nobody wants to keep getting told, do this, do that. At the end of the day, you want to be your own man. You want to be your own woman. You want to be the boss of you, you know? This is just, it's an amazing anthology. And I suggest, if you get a chance, you go through it. It's totally mind-blowing. It's amazing. I love it.